everyone, how's it going? My name's Ben. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're on a backpacking trip. We're heading to Duck Lake in the beautiful Inyo National Forest. It's about five miles. Let's get it. Well, it does not get much better than this. Beautiful scenery, fresh air, fairly empty trail. I think there is one lake here that is popular with day hikers. So I've seen a few folks. This first mile or so though is, it's a test. We're gaining some elevation. We're doing some switchbacks. I'm feeling it, but I'm feeling good. All right, so just about a mile in now. We made it to our first little offshoot. Arrowhead Lake is right over here. It's, uh, I think, a great lake for a day hike. And I think it's about a quarter of a mile extra to get down here, check it out, and then get back to our main trail. Let's go ahead and take a peek, though. All right, we're two miles in now. We've made it to our second lake of this trail. Uh, I forget the name of this lake off the top of my head. Maybe this is Skelter Lake, uh, something like that. Anyway, we made much better time on the second mile because uh, things flattened out a little bit. I think we're about at the halfway point and uh, it doesn't get much better than this. It's a nice place to grab a quick snack, grab a drink of water watch the fish feeding, and then we'll get back to it. Well, almost like clockwork, we just ticked over mile three and we're at another lake. There's water all along this trail. You gotta love it. Built in resting points, beautiful scenery. And this is really gonna be an important one because I'm pretty sure we just go up from here. So let's check it out. Well, 
the climb up to Duck Pass begins. We're at the base right now, and I don't know if the video will do it justice, but it's non-stop switchbacks uh, from here pretty much until Duck Lake, I think. So let's see how we do. Well, halfway up these switchbacks, I realized I made the biggest rookie mistake of all time. Left all my mosquito repellent back in the forerunner at the trailhead, and I was getting eaten alive. Luckily, a couple of super nice backpackers on their way down just let me borrow some of theirs. So, hopefully that'll hold me over through the night anyway, and uh, I'll be able to make it out of here tomorrow without a thousand bug bites. <sighs> That's where we came. Up there, up and around, and we still got more to go. All right, we made it up over the pass. Oh, that was brutal. Those were some serious switchbacks. My pace slowed down significantly. Uh, right at four and a half miles, and right now I'm at almost 40 minutes a mile. So, uh, I guess take that with a grain of salt. I'm doing a lot of back and forth to set the camera up and out of shape also, of course, so. That's playing a factor here, but I think Duck Lake's coming into view for the first time here, and this makes it all worth it. Well, that's what we came all this way for. Well, I finally pulled out my map here to orient myself, and it turns out the big one behind me is Duck Lake. Uh, way out on the other side there, I'm not sure you'll be able to make it out, that's Pika Lake. I think I'm gonna aim for a campsite on this peninsula looking thing right in between the two of them there. It seems like it might be a little protected from the wind and, and out of the way down there. If I continue on this trail, I'll make my way over to Purple Lake, but uh, I don't know if I got that many miles in me today, so we'll uh, we'll see how far we get, and then we'll we'll mosey down to find a campsite. I don't know what this is. Mine shaft, homestead, something cool built into the rock here. Well, after just barely ticking over six miles on the odometer, I think I finally found a place to camp. Beautiful little site here, protected by some trees and some rocks. Duck Lake, right over there, it's a beautiful view. The only sketchy thing is uh, some dilapidated mining ruins or, or something like that right over here, but you know me. I love to see old, historic, rundown pieces of history. So I think it's high time I pull out something to eat for lunch here. We're coming up on noon. Let's get camp set up first though. All right, we got the hammock set up. We got some snacks out. I've got some Sweetwood Smokehouse uh, steak bites and I also brought some of their jerky. Uh, I've got some uh, chili mango and uh, a whole bunch of other snacks. 
I was actually uh, pretty happy with my pack. That's the Hyperlite Mountain Gear uh, Southwest. I think this is the 3600. And uh, I managed to keep total weight to about 22 pounds with my food, my water, my bear vault, uh, everything like that. Primarily because uh, I ditched the heavy tent, uh, kept the hammock instead. I also got a tarp if I, just, you know, cowboy camp it. Also, instead of a, a full sleeping bag, I've just got my Enlightened Equipment Down quilt. Um, that thing is great. I love it. It is the best purchase I've ever made. I've got my Thermarest uh, Neo Air. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, I got some sort of lightweight Thermarest foam foam pad over there, and so. Overall, a pretty light pack. Uh, I'm feeling good after six miles to get here. Uh, a little bit of rest, a little food in my belly, and uh, and I'm feeling good about it. So, all right. Well, that quick rest in the hammock turned into uh, an hour-long nap. It is now just about 1:30, but we're finally getting lunch going because I am hungry, and I've got this uh, Heather's Choice smoked salmon chowder from uh, REI, it's one of their dehydrated backpacking meals. So, we got some water boiling on the stove here. And then we're gonna do it up. All right, we got our water boiled and mixed up in here. So this guy's rehydrating, I guess. It says, to let it sit for 20 minutes if you're at sea level or add one minute for every thousand feet above sea level. We're up here at 10,000 feet, so I guess we're just gonna give this a while and uh, see how it turns out. All right, well, it's been about 25 minutes and I'm getting impatient, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and dive in here. This is a, yeah, new brand for me. For as long as I can remember, I've been a, a mountain house guy. Uh, Give me some beefy mac and cheese and, and I'm happy. But uh, I figured what the heck, let's try something new. So I got a couple different flavors of Heather's Choice to try uh, while I'm out on this trip. So smoked sockeye salmon chowder. Let's see how it is. All right, here goes nothing with the first bite. It could probably use a little more time rehydrating, but you know what? It's good enough for me. That's uh, that's not too bad. It's got some good flavor. I think I do wish I had some hot sauce or something. But uh, I think I'm going to enjoy this. Well, my review of that Heather's Choice dehydrated meal is uh, actually pretty positive. I was a little bit worried about the package size, right? It was about half the size of a Mountain House meal package, but super filling, super flavorful. So one of the ways I was able to keep my pack weight down was by only bringing two liters of water. I had two of these big one liter smart water bottles in my pack, uh, knowing that that wasn't gonna be enough for the whole weekend. But this black thing on top is actually the Sawyer Squeeze Mini. And it's a water filter that screws right on, super lightweight, super convenient. Uh, plenty of water sources around me, so I knew that wasn't gonna be an issue. And uh, just like that, I've got clean, safe drinking water. Well, with the sun settling behind the mountains here, it's time for me to get the camp bear ready. Uh, that bear can that I've got all my food in, I need to get it out of my camp, tucked away somewhere safe for the night so I can hopefully retrieve it in the morning and bears won't bother me. And uh, then I'm gonna call it an early night so that, you know, as the sun wakes me up in the morning, I'm ready to pack up and make the six mile hike back out of here. So 
enjoy the sunset for a little bit longer and we'll pick you up in the morning. Well, good morning, everyone. It is right around 6 a.m. and a beautiful morning. Slight chill in the air still. No wind though, this lake is just as glassy as can be. I gotta show you guys this. Last night was pretty decent. Uh, it got it got cold. It got it was in the low 40s. I managed to stay warm. Uh, the thing that wasn't great though was the mosquitoes. Those guys are relentless out here. So I think this morning, instead of sticking around camping, making breakfast and coffee. I think I'm about to pack up and get out of Dodge as early as I can before maybe those mosquitoes wake back up for the day. Make it back to the car and then I can do breakfast and coffee at the car. So here, let me give you a, a look at the lake. This is just gorgeous. It is 6.20, my backpack's all packed up. I think it's time we hit the trail. What do you say? One last. Look at this side of the lake before you try to make it up and over the pass. Sure is beautiful. Sure is beautiful. It makes the six miles getting here totally worth it. it. Makes battling the mosquitoes totally worth it. I think so on the way in yesterday, I did the six miles in about three and a half hours. Again, take that with a grain of salt because I'm setting up the camera. I'm doing a lot of backtracking. I think it should be considerably faster on the way out. So I'll be interested to see just how long it ends up taking. I'm gonna avoid taking too many breaks and being eaten alive by the mosquitoes though. That's for sure. So I'm reminding myself that all that extra distance I did yesterday to find the perfect campsite, it all has to get added back on today. And let me tell you what, this climb up from Pika Lake to get back to Duck Pass, it sucks. It's not easy on my tired legs, but we'll make it one foot in front of the other. We made it. It's all downhill from here, baby. Now that is a pretty nice view. Well, it's kind of hard to believe, but we made it back to the trailhead in an hour and 52 minutes. Mileage on the odometer 4.84, which is just insane to me because yesterday we clocked in at over six and three and a half miles. So I know I didn't get a lot of footage on the way out, but uh, I was trying to get away from these mosquitoes and make up for lost time. Well, now that I made it back to uh, the Forerunner and put on a fresh shirt and, and some deodorant, I uh, have a couple reflections on the backpacking trip that I thought were worth sharing. Uh, lesson one, 
don't make the rookie mistake I did and, and leave your bug spray in the car. It only works if you bring it with you and apply it. Uh, I did just finish counting my mosquito bites. I don't know if you guys can see them here. It's pretty terrible. Um, oh yeah, it's not great. Uh, it's over 60, so yeah, not good. Uh, it itches like a mother. I don't know what I'm gonna do on this uh, four hour, five hour drive home. Uh, second thing, so the hammock was great. This is like my first backpacking trip with just a hammock. Uh, I enjoyed it. I think though, given the mosquito situation, it would have been so nice to have a tent just for a little bit of refuge. I do know they make like bug nets for hammocks, things like that. I might have to upgrade my system. So really, yeah, great trip. Duck Lake, easy five to six miles, whatever you make it, depending on how many offshoots you do uh, one way. It's like a 10 or 12 mile round trip. I would do it again in a heartbeat. So if you're looking for an intro backpacking trip, something that is achievable in a short weekend, I feel like Mammoth Duck Lake is definitely one of the doable ones. Permits uh, are required. You can get them pretty easily at recreation.gov. I decided to do this trip just a couple days ago and was able to grab a permit no problem. So make sure you do that. Make sure as always you do your part to leave no trace and, and leave things better than you found them. And until next time, get out and explore somewhere. <laughs>